Hey guys, this is Lockie, and this is the tenth part of my VR tutorial series. Before the video starts, I just wanted to say thanks for 100 subscribers. Um, I posted my first video on like in 2013, so it's nice to finally have done. So yeah, let's get right into the video. Okay, so what you can do is walk up to a button, and you can basically just put your controller up to it and press it. Uh, you can see in the print section uh, that it is printing out things. So it's pretty basic, it just sort of moves along with your controller and goes back up to the top afterwards. But yeah, that's it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually you can just create the button. So uh, it's going to be fairly basic, just create a cube, um, center it, make it however big you want. I'm just going to make it 0.15 by 1 by 0.15. Um, no, that's 1.5. Zero point one five, and actually I'll just make it zero point five in height and move it up zero point two five, so it's flat on the ground. Um, I'll create a actual sort of uh, anchor point, so I'll initialize that to zero point zero um, or zero zero zero, and I'll drag the cube underneath that. So basically, this is going to be like the pedestal of the button, so, um, so you can sort of like reach it without actually having to bend over the ground. And now we're just going to create the button, so thirty object cube, and we'll make it. 0.1 by 0.1 by 0 0.05 maybe. Um, move it up to 0.5 and actually maybe 0.55 that might be better. Nope. Okay that seems good. Um, okay so we're gonna have to add a few components. Um, so we're gonna be giving it a sliding draw component and basically that'll just make it so that it goes between the points that it's gonna go between and the other thing we're going to need is a spring joint. So we'll do those now. Um, we'll give it a sliding draw just to add everything else. And we'll give it a spring joint. OK, so basically, um, as with any sliding draw, uh, we need a, uh, well, we need point A and point B pretty much. So we'll just create those now. Create empty. Uh, I'll call this one A. And I'll create another one and call it B. Okay, so now they have both of those, uh, we'll actually just set the positions. So uh, we did 0 .0, uh, 0 0.525, so we'll do that with point A. Because this is going to be the upper point, because this is basically as high as you can go without being disconnected. So we'll do that. And point B will be 0 0.5. We'll just see what that looks like real quick, actually. Um, oh, we can probably go a bit lower, uh, 0 0.475 maybe, no, for, ah, we'll just go with 0 0.5, that should do. So it'll go between 0 0.5 and 0 0.525. Um, not a huge range of movement, but that'll do for now. Uh, you can tweak that later. So with point A, that's the point it's going to be going to by default. So we're going to, going to give that a um, rigid body. Uh, just set it to not use gravity and to not be kinematic. So then select the button. Um, we're basically just going to set the spring joint connected body to the point A. So what that means is it's going to by default sort of jump towards the first point all the time. Um, so yeah, we're just going to initialize this now. So anchor point, uh, I just want that to be zero. And we're going to make it so that it doesn't auto configure the connected point. Um, I don't think we need to change anything else. Uh, yep, so that's good. Uh, now with the actual interactions with, of this, I'll also just add A and B. But to push this around, uh, we're not going to actually make it so that you have to grab it. And that would be easy enough to do, but we're just going to make it so that you basically just sort of push your hand against it and then it automatically goes in without you having to press anything. So to do that, just go into your camera rig and select both of your controllers and we'll give it a sphere collider uh, with a radius of 0 0.05 and we'll move it down to minus 0 0.05. So I've just done a bit of experimentation before and that's what I found fits the best. That basically just gives the controllers a sphere collider so that's fairly straightforward. Now um, normally we wouldn't want the colliders to collide with anything so we're going to use that using like we're going to accomplish that using layers. So Go into layers and add a layer. Uh, we'll call this one um, controller, I guess. That will work. And the other one will be controller interactor. 
interactor. So that'll basically just be um, things that can interact with the controller and the controller will, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll select both the controllers and set their layers to controller. Uh, yes, change children. I don't think it really matters, but we'll do that anyway. Um, and with this one, the button, actually I'll just rename that real quick so it's easier to sort of know which one it is. Um, so button, uh, okay, so basically, yeah, we need to set its layer. So we'll go into controller interactor. So really that didn't change anything. So it's still the same because we haven't set the physics, uh, collision, uh, settings, I guess. So, um, go into edit project settings and physics, and we will change it so that these don't collide with anything, but each other. So. If you don't know how this works, it basically just sort of lines up and controller interactor can collide with controller, but nothing else. And controller will collide with nothing um, except for the controller interactor, but the way it's set up, it, that sets both of them. So, um, yep. Uh, now that will make it so that you can push it around and everything should be good. Okay, so next we're going to change a few more settings. So select the button and we're going to make it so that it can't use gravity. So. Yep, uh, in, in constraints, we don't want this to rotate at all. It's always going to be going up and down. So just freeze rotation in X, Y, and Z. And in held object, just uh, remove can pick up. So we don't want to actually be picking it up. We're just going to be pushing it around. So now into the actual code. So sliding draw, um, we want it to actually be generalized. So obviously this isn't a draw, it's just sliding. So we'll call it something else. Uh, so open that up. I'm just let that load. Okay. Um, okay, so in the sliding drawer, we're going to change its name to sliding object. And for that to actually update, we're going to have to also change it in here. Okay, so nothing changed there. It was just sort of like a naming thing. But, um,. Now what we need to do is actually sort of make it so that it pushes all the time. Um, actually, where is it? Oh, it's just closed. Okay, so in update, um, if parent does not equal null, so if we have a parent, then we want it to sort of join up to the line. So what that'll do is it'll make it so that only when we have a parent, it will like sort of limit the position to the line, which is not what we want because we actually want it to... Um, we, we're never actually going to have like a parent because it's always going to be disconnected. So we're going to do an else um, transform dot position equals yeah, that's just that line right there, except the offset. And we're going to make it so that instead of parent dot position, it's going to be transform dot position. Uh, okay, so what that'll do is it'll just make it so that it's always limited in its position. So um, now we need to add a using statement. So uh, using unity engine dot events, and we're going to be basically um, setting up a event system. So we're going to create two variables. So public uh, unity event. Um, I'm not sure why that didn't show up. Um, oh, unity edited events. We want it to be unity unity engine. Dot events. Okay, so we need the event um, hit a and public unity event hit b. Okay, so um, that'll just be basically like a public variable that we can initialize what we want to happen when it gets hit. So um, inside of the uh, update function, um, we're just basically just going to check whether it has hit A or has hit B, and if so, just invoke them. So if transform.position equals equals point A dot position um, hit A dot invoke. Um, and then else if transform dot position because equals point B dot position then hit B dot uh, hit B dot invoke okay so at the moment there's no sort of like um, 
tapping it and then removing it or anything. So there's, it's really just whether or not it's on it, but we'll change that in a moment. So um, I think that's everything for the code. Uh, so yeah, just save that and see you in the next part. Okay, so after running that, I've decided that this uh, should be a bit bigger. So Flash is going to make it so that it's 0.1 tall and we'll raise it to 0.55. So that'll work. Um, but as I said earlier, uh, it'll only detect when it is actually uh, currently pushing it or no, it's currently at the bottom or currently at the top. And we want it to detect when it gets pressed or when it gets released, like really. So um, what we'll do is um, we'll create a int called state and we'll create an int called previous state. So that was be the state and the previous state. Uh, we'll initialize them both to zero because zero will mean it's not on anything. And instead of hit a dot invoke, we will set it to um, actually state equals one. And instead of hit b dot invoke, we'll set it to state equals two. So one will be is currently at the point A position and two is currently at point B position and then we'll do else um, state equals zero. So zero as I said a second ago is when it's not on anything. So next what we're going to do is we're actually going to use these state values um, to sort of work out whether it's hit or left. And before we do that we'll actually just create a few more of these unity events. So public unity event uh, uh, released a and public unity event released b. Okay, so to keep track and work out all these things, we're gonna have to work out what the state that of the frame before was. So to do that, we're just gonna do prev state equals the state, and we're gonna do everything before this. And what that'll do is it'll just run through, update the state, change the logic, and then it'll update the prev state, and then it'll use that in the logic the next time through. So uh, in here, we're gonna do if uh, state equals equals one, and prev state equals equals zero. So if it's currently on point A and it wasn't on point A last time, then we're going to um, hit A dot invoke. Now, else if state equals equals two and prove state equals equals zero. So same thing except hit b dot invoke. Okay, so now we're gonna do pretty much the opposite. So else if state equals equals zero and prove state equals equals one, um, then we will do uh, release a uh, dot invoke and then we'll do else if state equals equals zero and prove state equals equals two so released b dot invoke okay so that's all of the um released and uh hit things set up so if you wanted to add like a held thing uh you could but for now this will do so, um, yep, that'll handle everything. So go back into Unity. And actually, no, we'll add one more thing so we can actually sort of know when these actions happen. So we'll do um, public void print, and we'll just make it be in a string, and we'll just print this text, if that's easy. Um, so yeah. Um, all you need to do is inside of the sliding object, now you have all of these. Um, we're just going to be checking for hit B and release B because B is the bottom one and that's all we really care about. We don't care when it's at the top point. So on hit B, we're going to make it so that it does uh, button uh, held object, actually, not held object, uh, sliding object dot print. Um, so I'll print hit and then we'll do the exact same except we'll print released um, again sliding object so print released 
Okay, so that should be everything, and I'll just test that now. Okay, so this is the last thing. Uh, when I change the size of this, I forgot to update the actual position of the A point. So we'll raise it by 0.25, so actually no, 0 0.025, so 0.55. Um, so yeah, that, now that all works, so here is the end result. Okay, so what you can do is walk up to a button, and you can basically just put your controller up to it and press it. Uh, you can see in the print session uh, that it is printing out things. So it's pretty basic, it just sort of moves along with your controller and goes back up to the top afterwards. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.